A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. I'm Dana Lash, and this season, I'm going to do the job the media won't. Defend the relevance of the one freedom that guarantees all the others, the Second Amendment. We'll also show you why the right to keep and bear arms has never been more widely used and more relevant in American society than it is right now. You've been warned. You might learn something. I'm sorry, do we have a militia in this country? Is, are we, That's, is there a militia here? Because it still doesn't say individual. See, as she's reading the Second Amendment, and I think There's, it's we such don't a, have a militia. Can't we hold true the sanctity of the Second Amendment while still having common sense? The purpose is to dry up the supply of these weapons over time. The Second Amendment doesn't apply at all. None of you get to have weapons for any purpose. What is it about us that makes us so dogged and insistent on having access to guns as the Second Amendment, worshiping it? We act like it's the Second Commandment, not the Second Amendment. That's right. Repeal the Second Amendment. As I've gotten older and watched how things progress, I'm starting to believe it a lot more, where that kind of just complete societal breakdown, anarchy, tyranny, whatever, is only a generation or two away if things get out of hand. The world watched in shock as a military coup unfolded in Turkey. Everyone wants to live in this state of, of kittens and sunshine, where they think that everything's perfect, that we're the sophisticated generation, and nothing like this happens anymore. But when people grow apathetic, that's when tyranny flourishes. It's like living in a house with a fire extinguisher for 20 years and never having to use it. And then saying one day, you know what? I don't think we need this thing anymore. We haven't had a fire in 20 years. When you looked at what was going on in Europe at the time, there were no guarantees for the people to keep and bear arms. And the authors of the Federalist Papers noted that. They said this is one of the main differences between the United States and the European countries is that uh, here in the United States, you did have a body of people who were capable of bearing arms for defense of themselves uh, and their state. People say, well, the founders couldn't have imagined this or that. You're absolutely right, they couldn't. There's no way they could have imagined the horrors of the 20th century. Uh, hundreds of millions of people killed by their own governments. And if you look back at all of the dictators throughout history, before they rose to power, they understood the first the two things you need. You need to disarm the people, you need to control the press. What are our first two amendments? Germany was one of the most civilized societies in, in history, basically. If you look at contributions to philosophy and music and literature, uh, and yet it's a society where you had the instigation, first you had the seemingly innocuous disarming of people in the Weimar Republic, and then you had the, the use of all those registration records that were created to disarm their political enemies social democrats and anybody who disagreed with the nazi party and then finally to disarm the the jews of germany uh, there's this odd modern conception that unless a right is written down uh, the government can interfere but that's incorrect and it's, it runs completely against how the founders saw the the setup of the country nobody gave me the right to speak freely to worship as i want or to carry arms to defend myself my family and my community and no one can take them away. No one has that right to take the natural rights of others. These are rights that were inherent to us being American citizens. Born on this soil, these are rights that we immediately come out of the womb with. There was never a time that predated them. There'll never be a time that outdates them. But this has been a decades-long debate, the interpretation of the Second Amendment. Oh, yes. um, you know, an individual's right to bear arms, right, or is it a, a militia a right? Yes. Exactly. So it's I been claimed that the Heller decision by the Supreme Court turned reality upside down and recognized a, a right to keep and bear arms by the people that never really existed, and that, that the court just invented the right. That decision, which struck down Washington, D.C.'s handgun ban, was the culmination of a decades-long lobbying push by the gun industry to twist the Second Amendment into something that would help it sell more weapons. 
that's just a propaganda argument. If you look not just at the Second Amendment, but at the state-level equivalents, right back to the 18th century, they usually stipulate, or the courts have interpreted them, uh, to mean that the right to keep and bear arms resides at the individual level uh, as much as anything else. We see this argument all the time. The Founding Fathers could never have envisioned semi-automatic rifles. They could never have envisioned the quote-unquote modern battlefield weapons of war. Uh, and therefore, the Second Amendment is null and void. Do you think that the Founders anticipated assault weapons that could very quickly kill 50 people? When we no longer need people to keep muskets in their, their home, then the, the Second Amendment has no function. But they never seem to make that argument when it comes to the First Amendment. This idea that somehow time has made the Second Amendment anachronistic is an idiotic argument because that's the same thing as saying, well, our speech rights are completely limited to quill and parchment. The Second Amendment refers to arms. And if you look at uh, common law definitions of arms at the time, it didn't mean muskets. It meant uh, arms, anything that you could uh, carry individually, that you could strike with. The idea of banning common weapons was also alien. Uh, purely in the sense that even in the founding era, all sorts of new uh, and, and different weaponry was available. A weapon in the hand of a tyrant, whether it's a musket or a saber or a spear or an AK-47, is still a tool of oppression. And that same tool in the hands of a, a free citizen is still a shield from oppression, whether it's 1797 or 2016. The only point at which one could feasibly say that the Second Amendment has outlived its usefulness is if you can guarantee peace for everybody and if you can guarantee that men will not be corrupted by power. Uh, and you cannot do those things. You could not do those things in 1791. You couldn't do those things in 1850. You can't do those things now. If you cannot adequately protect yourself, meaning that your government has restricted the means by which you can utilize something to adequately protect yourself, not only from them, but from other threats to your life, you are not free, period. You are not free. You're a prisoner. We can close the book on the lie that the NRA somehow made up the individual right to bear arms during the 20th century. History clearly shows that our interpretation of the Second Amendment is the same as what Americans have always known and the Founding Fathers intended. I think that they'd be proud of us for staying the course and disgusted by the politicians and media personalities who are so eager to deprive us of our rights.